Hello everyone. Good evening and welcome to Yes Securities, where we believe financial decisions should be empowering, not daunting. Our mission is to make finance accessible to all, regardless of background or experience. At Yes Securities, we've evolved from being just a transactional broker to becoming a trusted advisor over the past decade. What sets us apart is our commitment to providing quality financial advice backed by comprehensive research and disciplined investment process. Our flagship offering, Chlorophyll, draws inspiration from the essence of greenery, fueling growth through photosynthesis. Similarly, our research and stock picking strategies breathe life into a client's portfolio, helping them thrive in ever-changing investment landscape. Today, we are honored to have Mr. Ravindra Bandari with over 15 years of experience in the Indian financial landscape to discuss the crucial topic of return expectation from the Indian capital market. With expertise in investment banking and corporate investor relation, along with prestigious certificates like CFA and FRM, Mr. Ravindra's insights are both profound and practical. If you all have any qu queries or questions, kindly please drop them in the comment section. Over to you, Mr. Ravindra. Hello, everyone. Thanks. Thanks for sparing time for today's discussion. I guess there was some error in the previous link which uh, we have joined. So I'll start from the beginning where uh, I was explaining about uh, what we should expect from the Indian capital market in terms of return and few of the thoughts which I have, which I thought uh, I will be sharing today. And in case uh, you have any questions, please feel free uh, towards the end of the session. We can we can take the questions. Uh, uh, what I what I wanted to uh, first share about a few of the thoughts when we when we think about uh, equity market is uh, why equity market is important for any investors. See a large part of wealth creation if you compare uh, in India or the overseas, uh, the most of the large wealth creation that happens uh, from equity investment. Uh, though there are cases of huge wealth creation, uh, decent wealth creation has happened from other instrument. Uh, something like real estate and some uh, some uh, sometimes uh, 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 from the debt market, uh, but the but the but the size of wealth creation which has been from the equity capital market is far far outweigh if we compare any other instrument. Uh, basically, if if I have to uh, put investors, it can be uh, among two categories who uh, who are among the very long term investors. First would be the investor like. Uh, say in India, we will say uh, Rakesh Junjanwala. On a global stage, we will say Warren Buffett, who have invested in good companies for over multiple decades to create that uh, large compounding effect on their wealth. Or other kind of investor would be something like promoter, who are one of the largest investor in their own companies. So what they both of these uh, section of investors do in their lifetime is they identify good companies and they stay invested for a long period of time. Uh, so whenever you see a compounding effect kicks in, uh, that translate into a very large pot. Uh, the, the wealth creation can be can be for your retirement purpose. It can be uh, for children education. It can be uh, for children marriage or something where large expenditure is required in your lifetime. Uh, but uh, over a period of time, an empirical evidence, as I was saying, is as displayed that large, large wealth creation has to happen from equity capital market. And one thing which we are also trying to seed the idea among the mind of our customers and everyone else is it's very important to inculcate that uh, uh, importance of uh, starting early in terms of equity investment, be it when you are, when you are just uh, mid twenties and just started your uh, earning some salaries. But it is very important that you start dibbling, start your getting your hand dirty in uh, in capital market, so that you will have enough experience. You have seen few cycles uh, by the time you are 30, 35, and you are materially uh, your earning power improves materially. So you have already have that kind of a few years of experience, so that you can invest a larger amount. But investing early is very important, even when you have a very small purpose uh, in your life. Uh, what I what I was thinking I'll share is uh, how we construct or how as an investor or as an analyst 
with think about return expectations from Indian market. Uh, say for a base case, if I take for the Indian capital market, say Indian uh, government bond, uh, Indian government bond, 10 year bond uh, is the most safest instrument in India. And uh, they are trading right now at 7.1% uh, kind of rate. So that is the base requirement of return when I'm not taking any kind of risk. Every step I increase my risk I, as an investor, I want to be rewarded for adding that extra risk in my portfolio. So if I start with the government bond, it is 7.1% today. Uh, if I move from government firm to a triple A uh, government companies, uh, something like NTPCs, power grid or power finances of India, which are equally safe, AAA. Uh, there, I, uh, for every layer of increase of risk, say if I move from government bond to government companies, I ask from 7.1, I increase my return requirement by 50 basis point higher. So 0.5% I'll ask higher. From there, if I move from a AAA government companies, if I move to AAA companies, which are private companies, they are also very well run enterprise in India, but they are not as safe as government because uh, in government companies, I have an extra safety that even if business doesn't perform, the government take, will take the responsibility of returning my uh, capital investment and whatever they have promised to me. So moving from AAA government companies to AAA private companies, I will ask for 50 bips higher. That is how the construct of requirement of return in the mind of investor has been set up. Similarly, if I move from AAA companies to AAA uh, A companies, I'll ask for 50 bips higher. From B to double, uh, single A companies, similarly, uh, for each layer of additional risk, I'll go on for asking for higher requirement. And then when, say, if I, if I create a basket of companies, which is a single A and I am standing at nine and a half, ten percent return from debt market. I want to move to a higher risk, which is equity market. Why equity market is rewarded higher uh, as an investor is because I'm ready to take that additional risk and volatility, which will come with uh, equity return. Next questions, which always I was think I used to think is what should be an ideal return expectation? Uh, from Indian capital market. Uh, so uh, as we have been taught in schools and all the all the investment books will tell you that uh, you expect whatever is the profitability growth of your basket companies of your portfolio or, or the individual companies. If the if the profit of those companies is growing 3x in 10 years, you should expect 3x return in your portfolio expecting there is no re-rating or de-rating of the uh, stock or portfolio. Uh, so generally, if you are investing through the cycle, uh, you have been invested in the bull market and bear market and still invested. So what kind of return should be the expectation of return should be? It should be near about what is the profitability growth of the companies. Uh, so the construct then, then we think about how to deconstruct this profitability growth of Indian companies. Uh, so the answer lies is, say, Indian economy is expected to grow at 6.5%, 7% real GDP growth. As we are saying, IMF is also now saying India will be the fastest growing economy for the for next 10, 15 years. We have materially surpassed China by 150, 200 basis point. So our, our real GDP growth is about 6.5%, 7%. And we are backed up with 5% kind of inflation. So nominal GDP growth of the country is about 12% plus. And then uh, if I take uh, Nifty 50 companies, which are the best run and the flagship companies of India, uh, they have all the financial uh, muscle and the skill, manpower, uh, all the all the uh, technical know-how to capture whatever growth is available in the country. So they will grow at a faster rate than the economic growth of the entire country. So if the country is growing at 12% GDP, uh, nominal, then they will be growing at 13, 14, 15 percent. So that is the kind of return expectation. If I'm moving from debt market, which is a single A, uh, where where there is little amount of risk but not very large, I'm moving from nine and a half, ten percent to that 14, 15 percent because I'm taking that risk of uh, equity market. Uh, in a in a technical term, we used to call it equity risk premium. What is additional? <coughs> risk you are taking 
for being invested in the capital market in the equity market and how you should be rewarded that that four or five percent extra which i'm getting from investing in a nifty 50 companies uh, that is to reward the uh, investment instead of putting your money in the debt instrument similarly if i move from say a large cap nifty 50 companies to somewhere around uh, nifty mid cap companies these are these are relatively smaller in size compared to nifty 50 uh, empirical evidence again here shows that uh, for last uh, 9 10 years it has been uh, uh, for last uh, for particularly last one year the the return on a on a mid cap universe has been fairly uh, high uh, but otherwise if i take uh, if i take only the first 9 year data of last 10 year uh, the outperformance from uh, mid cap was only 300 350 basis point it was only because last year nifty has grown by 25% and uh, mid cap universe is about 50% or even higher so if i take that last 10 year performance it would be somewhere around 400 to 500 basis point higher so this higher return even on mid cap compared to nifty 50 has come to me as an investor because i am re i'm ready to take a little bit higher risk than I was taking when I was uh, investing in Nifty 50 companies. So this kind of construct you should have in mind uh, that if you are taking higher uh, risk and so your uh, your return expectation should also be higher. And and uh, some of this uh, some of this idea might also help you when you are when you are identifying mutual fund because they also report what is the uh, higher alpha uh, compared to different kind of risk metrics they are taking. Uh, if you if you try to track on uh, them, they will report some trainer ratio and sharp ratio, which tells you about what kind of outperformance. Because only outperformance is not important. If you are if you are outperforming in a bull market, taking very high risk, the problem of that decision will reflect in a bear market because in bull market everything goes up. Uh, but beauty of your investment get reflected in a beer market. Uh, the soundness of your decision making will reflect in a beer market. Uh, for that, uh, they used to report short, you know, and uh, and uh, sharp and uh, uh, trainer ratio. So it is kind of outperformance of uh, of a mutual fund compared to the risk, be it standard deviation or beta. Uh, uh, how they are outperforming uh, compared to what kind of risk they are taking. Uh, at chlorophyll at yes securities we also uh, we also keep a lot of emphasis on uh, the, what kind of return we are generating and what kind of risk we are taking for those kind of return generation so we also uh, uh, identify companies uh, where we believe that the sound return generation is expected and not large tail end risk on the downside is there uh, and and on top of it uh, there is allocation strategy uh, among different sector, among few companies, where we try to uh, uh, optimize the risk and return policy for the, for our companies. Other thing which which actually uh, I wanted to discuss, and this you will hear it very often is uh, that Indian market is uh, sometimes is called expensive, and uh, say for a global for global investors who can invest in other different emerging market or developed market, how they decide to invest in India, uh, given given if we oh, absolute way basis, if I only compare a PE ratio of two different markets, say a developed market would be trading at 13-14% while the uh, emerging market India would be somewhere around 20-21. So there is, there is this distinction is uh, the growth opportunity and the large growth opportunity offered by India uh, actually attracts these global investors. Say right now, India would be about uh, uh, what we hear is India is about three and a half trillion dollar economy. Uh, so that should be about 3.5, 3.7 percent of the global GDP. And in next decade or two, we will we will be knocking at double digit number. So every global investors want to have their hand uh, in this pie that. Uh, if there is an economy which will be a larger force in next 20 years in the global economy. So I also want to have a uh, play in that uh, segment uh, from three and a half percent of the global GDP. If I move to 10, 12, 15 percent in next 20 years. So there is there is enough reason for global investor to come uh, towards Indian market. 
uh, other things which which is very unique in the indian uh, indian market which i have uh, realized of late is uh, indian indian uh, capital market offers you a very diverse investment opportunity say say if there are there are fast uh, there are fast growing economy in the southeast asian nation uh, be it vietnam uh, indonesia is a very large economy but vietnam or thailand which are which are fairly uh, smaller economy uh, the problem for global investor there would be the, they are very good in one or two segment of the entire ecosystem while anyone coming uh, in the indian market you have very large established banking uh, companies very large nbfcs where you can try investing there are it sectors which is fairly large automobiles few of the indian two wheelers are are among the among the largest uh, player in few of the african countries so uh, in terms of manufacturing in terms of chemicals uh, there are the, the opportunity size and opportunity breadth offered by the indian market is very diverse uh, maybe it it's uh, uh, very high tech uh, very high end technology and stuff you will find uh, you will go and invest in the U- us market but there are replica of uh, say not replica but one down of those technology uh, it companies you will find in the indian market where you can invest uh, so this kind of opportunity is not offered by very uh, uh, other southeast asian economy uh, where india stand as a difference uh, other thing which we have realized in the indian market is uh, unlike uh, many of the uh, other uh, southeast asian countries uh indian economy is driven and the and the uh, capital market is driven by promoters entrepreneurs of india who are working not to just have a higher revenue number but it is driving towards higher profitability as a investor you are say if you if you are government entity you would be looking at a higher gdp numbers which is which is a kind of play in china where where the government gives the state owned enterprise some kind of uh, gdp target which trickle down to the economy uh, at a lower level but in india it is whatever growth we are witnessing it is more driven by the drive of the entrepreneur so and and whatever growth we are experiencing it is because there is opportunity to make money from the market in terms of profit for the, for the companies Uh, so it is not a top down approach where growth has been pushed and target has been given to the entrepreneur but entrepreneur they themselves find that there is opportunity in the indian market we should invest and we will generate higher pat so so the entire ecosystem is is moving towards higher profitability and and if that is the system then you will always have higher uh, multiples uh, if you compare among the among the different nations other thing which stand out for i, I remember precisely other thing which stands out about the indian market is uh, because we are very efficient in terms of roe generation return on whatever capital has been employed by the indian companies i don't remember precisely but india stands i guess third or fourth in terms of rank of roe among different countries so uh, since uh, when we when we because india is always a capital scarce country you will always need capital and in that uh, uh, in that construct if if indian companies are generating higher roe compared to the global diaspora they are destined to always get that kind of higher pe multiple because because of the efficiency which has been brought in by the indian companies so uh, that those are few reasons apart from something which is very logical and very very commonly discussed uh, is that uh, india despite being large opportunity also offers the highest growth say uh, we we are we have displayed in last one two years that we are outgrowing china by 1.5 to 2 uh, percentage and that is uh, like uh, when when the world economy which is scarce of growth uh, india uh, stand as a oasis of growth in that uh, uh, growth deprived market uh, importance of china has subdued uh in last one and a half two years among the investors mind and which you can see it as a reflection uh from a uh, few of the their benchmark performance and uh, what we feel is whenever uh, say for last few years uh, or particularly last few quarters what we have seen is uh, though the market performance has been phenomenal 
the FII has not been very enthu uh, enthusiastically participating in Indian market, despite the fact that uh, if I compare the uh, the passive investment, uh, if I compare the uh, benchmark of the weight of India compared to what it used to be uh, seven, eight years back, India, I guess seven, eight years back uh, among the emerging market basket was about 14.14, 14 and a half percent, which is now about 18 percent or plus so there has been four percent increase in the weight of india uh, while uh, uh, and some of the increase has happened in the last two years but we haven't seen the similar kind of fund which have moved to india uh, whenever that happens again um, our our logic is uh, you will uh, the larger fii's will find the large cap universe in india as their first port of call uh, whenever they, they decide to come back uh, aggressively in the Indian market. Uh, but the weight, the, the, the weight which we see on the uh, benchmark, India has moved from 14 to 18 uh, percent. In comparison, in the same time period, China has, at one point of time was one third of the emerging market weight. Uh, right now, it has become one fourth. So we have taken fair uh, share of Chinese loss in terms of higher allocation for the Indian investors. One thing which I was talking about, uh, uh, return expectation, uh, we were discussing that uh, uh, return expectation from a large cap universe should be 14, 15% and it should be, uh, why it should be higher than debt market because we are taking that higher risk. One thing which we used to always hear is uh, someone who has invested in the 90s or early 2000, they used to make 20% consistently compounded in the Indian market, 20, 25%. Uh, the, the distinction is because uh, there is a regime shift in terms of inflation in India. Say, pri say prior, I guess, 2014, uh, it was Raghuram Rajan who bought in a uh, concept of inflation targeting, which was implemented in, I guess, 2015-16, where, where now RBI has a guidance of 4% as a baseline inflation and plus minus 2% is the band. Prior to that, inflation in India used to be very high. Uh, sometimes uh, in 90s, it used to touch even above uh, double digit number. So whenever you, we are constructing that return requirement, inflation is also the part of that return requirement. Say if someone was generating 25-30% return uh, in 90s, 25%, then large part of it because we were operating in a high inflationary economy. Inflation itself was 10-12%. At some point of time, it was even higher. Uh, as I was saying, our, our uh, return construct should be real GDP growth plus inflation plus whatever outperformance by our selected companies in terms of revenue and EBITDA or profit generation. So if, if one component inflation itself come down from that 15% requirement to now as a 5%, so my expectation, if I'm in, if I've invested for 20, 30 years back, also uh, back then the uh, the return expectation was very high. Uh, I guess back then even the bank FD used to be 17, 18 percent. So uh, just a kind of thought, uh, so that uh, whenever you are thinking about uh, return expectation from the Indian market, you know uh, how how to think about a construct of return expectations. Apart from that, uh, uh, say. I was talking about debt and equity. Uh, apart from that, one thing, a uh, few of the things which is very important, very critical when we also make our decision making is uh, what kind of allocation should be there. Uh, say uh, if you if you come up with a brilliant idea of investment, uh, but since it's a new idea, you allocated very small amount, a single digit or a two percent of your portfolio. Even that idea become five x ten x. It doesn't move materially in your portfolio level. So uh, allocation also becomes very important on upside, equally important on downside. Say uh, we also used to gauge that how much allocation, say in a particular scheme we are having on a particular sector. Uh, say banking uh, is a overweight, uh, is a very highly uh, allocated sector in the Indian market. So we also play around to see if we are unnecessarily taking higher risk in terms of putting some higher allocation in certain sector, uh, we consistently uh, con uh, we continuously monitor our portfolio in that regard. Uh, other thing which uh, always uh, 
one everyone forget us about uh, risk let me spend few few minutes uh, talking about risk because uh, return in isolation is meaningless uh, return generation you can you can make a high return uh, if you have taking an exceptionally high risk in your portfolio so the risk construct is uh, say nifty 50 is as a few of the safer companies in india uh, you come to mid cap it will be a, it will be adding a, a, a layer of risk if you move from mid cap to small cap it will be adding another layer of risk uh, and small cap and beyond say uh, top 500 companies of india uh, listed companies of india and if you move down there uh, below that then there is an additional layer of risk if you move to sme segment uh, uh, I don't know how to quantify that risk because we haven't seen a down cycle uh, after the last three, four years, uh, material down cycle in SME. Because, because what we see when, uh, let me first start with the classic definition for risk. Uh, I guess uh, Howard Marks or Peter Lynch will say that permanent loss of capital is, the, uh, is how I define risk. Uh, that is kind of risk when you're managing your own money. If you are managing someone else's money, because say for people like us at Yes Securities, uh, we are managing, we are advising on others people's money. So we will be constantly benchmarked with the uh, indices. So instead of uh, the permanent losses, definitely that is a uh, one definition, but we will also be gauged on a, on a few month basis, how we have outperformed or underperformed uh, the benchmark which we have selected as a comparison for our performance. Uh, so risk, uh, one thing when we when we identify any opportunity for investment is what is risk adjusted return we are targeting? Are we taking too much amount of risk to generate? Because when you say too much amount of risk, one thing can be the volatility in the stock price, but other thing can be uh, the volatility in the underlying business that also is a volatile component uh, that uh, though I'm projecting as a trajectory for profit growth, but there are there are higher chances of moving away from that projection. Uh, so when we when we construct a portfolio, having a portfolio which which comes with a decent return, but doesn't come, but also uh, doesn't get with a proportionately higher risk that is the ideal kind of portfolio construct uh, one can think of uh, just one example which came to my mind and uh, when we are thinking about uh, risk and return uh, profile uh, one company in india though i was thinking i won't take name uh, but colgate formula it is one of the lowest beta company in india uh, though return generation from that company will not be very high. Uh, it should be over a period if you have invested, uh, if I remove the early 2000 time period, but if you invested for a long period of time, you would, uh, uh, bearing up aside that last one year performance, uh, you would be expecting that 10 12 percent kind of return only from, uh, from this company. But think about this, this company, uh, uh, at the time uh, when I used to study, they, they, their beta used to be 0.35 or 0.4 only. Right now it is a bit higher than 0.5. The reason because of market volatility and stock has performed along with the market. But think about you have identified the company which which will not be generating that 15% return but will be generating 10-11% uh, return. But instead of having that uh, one unit of risk, this company comes with only half a unit of risk. So that kind of uh, construct I'm, I'm trying to leave with you uh, uh, when thinking about what kind of return expectations uh, from Indian market. Other thing, uh, one study which we did uh, towards the end of uh, calendar 2023, uh, uh, I would like to share that study. What we, what we found out was uh, we compared uh, last 13, 14 years of data and uh, we compared how was the performance of large cap universe, how was the performance of, of small cap universe. And we found that uh, small cap on an overall level, right now I'm talking about on an overall level, used to trade at a 15-16% uh, discount to the large cap. Uh, but as it stands today, the small cap universe would be uh, about 15-16% premium to the large cap. 
so now it's a time if if we are selecting because uh, the beauty of your investment get reflected in a bear market in bull market everyone is a genius uh, the beauty of your investment reflects in a bear market when you have to actually make stock selection and portfolio allocation uh, in this concept when we've identified that uh, uh, the small cap has actually delivered phenomenal return in calendar 2023 it was up about 47 48% in one calendar year and then also uh, on top of that the fact that uh, uh, compared to the historical level they are significant premium in terms of valuation uh, now uh, if we are selecting any any ideas which comes from the small cap uh, we have to have that added layer of risk that okay what what is the downside here are are uh, we have to see whether what kind of promoters promises have been given in few of the last discussion and how the performance has been because you have to be selective in terms of what can be the tail end uh, downside risk uh, just wanted to leave those kind of thoughts uh, when we are thinking about return expectations uh, from indian market otherwise there is plethora of opportunity uh, it it won't be wrong when i say that uh, if you have invested for a long time in indian market and if you have invested in a decent set of companies it would be very difficult for you to not to make a decent kind of return uh, the only only thing required is discipline uh, and patience in indian market uh, we would we we are about among the largest fastest growing economy and we will continue to remain so for next at least one to two years so there is plethora of opportunity when indian economy move from three and a half trillion uh to ten trillion dollar <coughs> so so uh, another thought which just came to my mind uh about wealth creation is say uh, say one there is one benchmark rule which says uh market cap to gdp ratio <coughs> Uh, Warren Buffett talk about uh, somewhere around hundred uh, percent. Uh, if if your uh, economy is three and a half trillion dollar, you should be about three and a half trillion dollar market cap. So when we are targeting in next fifteen twenty years, we will move from three and a half trillion dollar <coughs> to ten trillion dollar. So this extra six and half trillion dollar, which will be generated in economy. there will be equivalent generation in terms of market cap uh, for the indian companies few of this 6 and 1/2 trillion dollar can be achieved with newer companies joining the listed space and company raising fund from the capital market but large part of it will be generated by the companies which are already there which has already that part of 3 and 1/2 trillion dollar large part of movement from 3 and 1/2 to 10 trillion dollar will be enjoyed by the companies who already has their feet on the ground and business which are dominant as a franchise so uh, that kind of outlook i want to give for our investors as well to be in the indian market for a long period of time uh, don't be afraid for any kind of volatility which may happen in the indian market because uh, because you make higher return when you are embracing that volatility the problem uh, for for investors is they they uh, they during the shake out period they tend to leave the market uh, the ideal thing is not to overly invest uh, every time uh, you should have 12 15% as a liquid cash so that if look market can correct 10 15% for any reason for any reason known for any reason unknown you should and and you can't plan for those kind of event Uh, the only way you can you can face those event is you have that uh, few amount of extra cash to deploy uh, when that uh, actually materializes and if that doesn't materialize you should be happy with your 85 90% allocation which you have made in the market but uh, that is the volatility you should be happy to deal with uh, and stay invested you would make enough money in the market uh, that's pretty much which i had to discuss uh i'll leave the forum open for questions if you have any questions you can uh you can ask me yeah anshul is asking about renewable energy look the opportunity size in this space is humongous 
uh, and whatever uh, say our government or or uh, developed market government is trying to do on renewable space uh, this is very much required as the need of the hour see so what we are experiencing in terms of uh, change in climate and and sporadic weather uh, renewable energy is very much the need of the hour uh recently our prime minister has announced that they will be thinking about 1 crore uh, household with a solar panel so opportunity size is is very very large uh, uh the only thing is you have to identify uh companies which has the uh, technical know how uh, capacity uh, they are backed by good promoters don't Do, i would only suggest that don't fall for companies uh, which are going to renewables because the segment is very hot there be with the companies which are which has been there in renewables for a fairly long period of time uh, which has shown consistent profitability uh, which didn't came to the sector because uh, right now it has become a very uh because right now if you are investing in renewables you will get a higher multiple in market don't go for those companies but someone who has been profitable uh though the valuation right now may be higher but uh, all those even even the few uh, defense sector some uh, ramesh ji is asking about defense uh the same thing that uh, uh, the, uh, there are few companies the smaller companies which will go to defense because right now the multiple which they can command if they have defense order book will be fairly high but don't go for those companies but someone who has already displayed uh, operational excellence in the sector segment uh, the segment the segment is very very large we can't even uh, pencil the thought that uh, how large it can be think about this just just a thought process that all the developed market they started thinking about environment and everything when they reached that 15000 20000 dollar per capita they had the financial muscle to think about uh, how to create a sustainable environment because they are already sitting on that 15000 20000 dollar per capita india right now is about 2500 only and at this stage also uh, we, our our diaspora our politicians and uh, thought processes how we can accommodate uh renewables and sustainable uh things because we also first the priority is to move from 2500 dollar per capita to 10000 so uh, uh, if we have to sacrifice some of the uh, uh sustainable requirement it it can it may be okay because you can't have a double thought about moving from 2500 to 10000 but uh at this stage itself we are thinking about how we can accommodate renewables green energy sustainability how we can take care of environment it still shows that uh, at this level also we can think about uh, having 11 12% right now uh, uh, rpo or the renewable purchase obligation is about 15% and we are already touching 11 12% even on the fuel side we are thinking about how the uh, better fuel efficient which are less pollutant we can be added so these kind of thing is important and it's it will be very difficult to uh, uh, think about the opportunity size it's very very large uh, only submission will i will have here is don't uh, go for the companies where you start hearing about they are moving to defense because because the sector is hot and they will command a higher valuation uh, stick with uh, someone who has delivered consistently in this sector the same answer goes for defense the opportunity size is very very large uh, so naresh is asking how can we identify best segment uh, our our government announcement enough uh, look one thing is uh, for us also it's uh, it is a challenging situation because we also have to identify keep on identifying uh, which are the segment which is expected to perform well for next few quarters uh, one thing which uh, as a as as a individual you can track is uh, because government announcement also also will come at a at a decently uh, mid stage may not be very early stage but uh, early mid stage 
uh, something which uh, uh, though i am a fundamental analyst uh, but if you track performance sector wise if you are tracking performance of sector uh, uh, on a weekly or monthly basis i think uh, that will give you a lead indicator uh, and if you understand fundamentals then you will see uh, whether there is an error in this understanding or or there is genuine opportunity so that that way you can blend and have your answer thank you savindra for your invaluable insights let's carry forward this new found understanding to make informed financial decision to everyone here thank you very much for joining us stay informed stay inspired stay tuned to yes securities for more updates thank you